what's up welcome back to the channel so for this video I decided to work on one specific sound one specific color which is the minor 7 such a beautiful sound that I decided I'm gonna start a series that each video is gonna be about one chord one color you know minor major 7 minor 7 major 7 I really think diving deep into that sound and into one thing can get you a lot further and deeper in understanding that color so it's probably a good idea to focus on that sound and see what fits what doesn't fit Every color kind of asks for specific things and stuff feels more natural and stuff feels less natural. So it would seem like a good idea for me to spend a whole video on just one color. So if some of the things I say in this video resonate with you, then you can maybe spend a week on it or spend some time with it and uh, hopefully you get something out of it. So in this video, you're gonna see some of my favorite shapes for a minor seven and some thoughts and ideas about how to really solo over a minor seven chord. Let's go over some shapes. Let's talk about, for the sake of this example, I think it would be easy, E minor seven. So an E minor seven is obviously a minor chord with a flat seven. So there are four notes in the chord. The one, flat three, five, flat seven, right? So I just came up with this right now to, I just thought it would be cool to harmonize each note. This is a way to harmonize it that is very true to the sound of E minor seven, and then you can also harmonize it in different ways. So obviously in this example, you got some extensions in there. So let me show you the thought process behind this last idea. So I decided to harmonize the note E with a, a sus2 chord. It's an A, a B, and an E shape. It's a really nice shape. You can move it around. you take this shape and move it around the neck. So I harmonize the E, the D, and the B with this shape, and then I play this to harmonize the G. I decided to take the natural six, stolen from the Dorian sound and those colors, flat seven, and then the G, which is the third. So it sounds like this. This is just a E minor triad with an E on top. So some of my favorite shapes to play this chord in songs or uh, in composition, uh, we have to go back to some basics here and talk about drop twos for that chord, okay? So we got four of them but three different versions for all sets of strings, okay? So in each drop two chord, you have four notes on four strings. So this is root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. And now I'm gonna show you the shapes with extensions that I like to use. So instead of, root position, just like this, I like to add the four. And then instead of this one, I like to play 
which is instead of the one, you switch it to the nine. And instead of this one, you can also add the nine instead of the one. And then instead of this one, you can add the nine. You can have the four and the seven. You can have the four and the nine. You can have the four, the nine, and the six. When I work on shapes, I like to also take a little solo and try to come up with some lines. Hopefully these four shapes are enough for now. There's a lot to them and you're gonna learn a lot just from knowing those four. So please practice them. Because at the end of the day, you're supposed to just memorize them. And then you'll have these colors in your fingers. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the minor sound and I'm moving it around through different tonalities. So I'm traveling between E minor 7 to G minor 7 and then to A minor 7 and then B minor 7 and then, and then back to E minor 7. It really sounds good when you just move them and jump them around as they are. talk about some of my favorite arpeggios to use for solos over minor 7 chord. Let's stay in E minor. One of my favorite ones is this one right here. on my Patreon, so go check that out. And I want to talk about a little bit about the Dorian mode here, because what people usually use over minor chords in R&B and jazz is going to be the Dorian mode. So make sure you got that under your fingers and your ears and get familiar with the mode itself, okay? So the way I do it is I just create a drone and then I get to know the scale nice and slow.
so this is how I work on a color. I'm pretty much flowing and try to come up with ideas as I go. And the ideas can be anything. It could be intervals. It can be playing fast. It could be playing slow. It could be something technical like a sweep, uh, chromatics. It could be just shapes. It could be triads and double stops. The way I practice here, I really recommend you guys to try it. And I want you to let me know in the comments or just DM me or something. Just reach out and say, hey, I tried to do the thing, but something stopped me. What I'm interested in is knowing what stopped you. And then we just all keep getting better because I'm really interested in the subject of, of, of what, what are the blocks? Why do we have a block? What really stopped you? Maybe I can help. Maybe I can figure it out. Or if I won't figure it out, at least I'll have something to think about. Please, yeah, please reach out and ask me. Basically, grab your instrument, choose on a tonality. Now I'm going to choose C minor. Uh, and let's say because of this video, you want to work on minor seven chord. And I'm just trying and now I'm starting to just work on it, right? I started with some fourths, you know. See how fourths sound on this. into this three notes at the time one two three one two three one two three sometimes four so now I'm just exploring sounds um, that I've never really played before that much okay so I think that's it for this video I just wanted to share with you guys this idea how do you practice a chord, a sound, a mode? It's not just learning it. So probably some of you guys are just wondering, so what is it then? What is it other than just knowing where it is on the neck? It doesn't end there. Now let's say you have it. So how do you play on it? What kind of lines should I create? Or like, how does it actually sound? So hopefully that makes sense. And if you even watched till here, then thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe or any of these buttons if you want to engage with the screen. That would be super appreciated. And even if you're just watching, thank you. Uh, hope you had a good time. And before you go, maybe leave a comment and let me know what you want the next video to be about. If you want more tabs, more information and more uh, close relationship with me, so uh, make sure to check out my Patreon page and uh, for three dollars a month you'll get all my tabs for my TikTok tips and you'll be able to ask me questions and I will answer them any guitar related questions also extra material and my YouTube videos tabs as well so if you're interested go check that out thank you so much for watching have a great day and I'll see you in the next video